Industry Insider brought to you by Jay Dillon, coming to you from Face the Music 2012 here at the Melbourne Arts Centre. And uh, joining me, Martin Atkins. How are you, my friend? Great. A little bit jet lagged, but very adrenalised by the city. Adrenalised. That's good. I like that. Adrenalised, yeah. Now, uh, we, we, we saw you out and about last night checking out a few gigs. How was, uh, was that the first night out in Melbourne? That was my first day here. I was here in the mid-80s. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and come here every 30 years. Yeah. Make it a little thing. That's but, good. Um, Regular visits. Yeah. I, I didn't get out and about anywhere yesterday. We just had dinner with a few people. Oh, right. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, tr got some sleep and then prepared things for this morning. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, um, for the uninitiated out there or the people that don't know uh, who you are, can you take us through a little bit of uh, your career, how you got into the business and uh, where you started? Well, my dad bought me a drum kit. And I started playing drums. I started backing strippers and drinking Newcastle Brown Ale when I was 11. Yes. Joined PIL when I was like 18, 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, Metal Box, Paris of Prontomps was my first gig. Flowers of Romance, Live in Tokyo, This Is What You Want, This Is What You Get, for people who know the pill stuff, mm -hmm. the, the good early pill stuff. Um, so I was in pill for five years, Killing Joke, I did the Extremities album. I managed the band as well for a while. Ministry, Nine Inch Nails. Started my own label, Invisible. Mm -hmm. We've released 400 albums in the last 22 years. I have my own studio, a band called Pig Face, which everybody is in Pig Face. Flea, Danny from Tool, Trent Reznor, everybody. Um, uh, I still do that. I have a band called The Damage Manual also that I do. I DJ. And I've started writing books and teaching and s speaking all over the world. Do you sleep at all? That's the question I want to find out about. That. <laughs> yeah, I, I got four kids as well, so it's tough. So there's but absolutely yeah. no sleep between that and four kids. No. 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 And uh, what do they think about Dad doing all of this, uh, all of this work? They don't give a shit. That's good. I, I That's thought, good. you know, I thought that they would be like they'd get into music or get involved with the label or the t-shirts or the studio. No. Um, Maybe one day they'll care, but I'm trying to let them find their own shit that interests them. Mm -hmm. uh, my eldest son is into his own fashion line. He's like sewing furry leopard skin print stuff onto pockets of pre-existing shirts. Like, wow, it's kind of punk rock. Um, they're all doing their own things. That's good. That's good. Yeah, now that's let's cool. let's have a, let's have a chat about uh, the book. Uh, Welcome to the music business. How did, uh, wh what inspired that? Well, I, my first book was Tour Smart, mm -hmm. which I wrote about the touring business because there wasn't a book about the touring business. So I wrote that and then I started doing classes in touring. Mm -hmm. um, and Welcome to the Music Business, You're Fucked started as a t-shirt. Yeah. And people just went, I just printed it and wore it at South by Southwest two years ago. People freaked out. I could have sold 2,000 of those. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I titled one of my lectures, you know, instead of 20 tips for being great in the music business, <laughs> I just call it Welcome to the Music Business, you're fucked. And um, so that was the theme, that became the theme of it. And then that went over so well. I was really surprised that you, it, when you tell somebody, you're fucked, nobody cares, you're fucked. Let me translate that into German. Wenn du glaubst, hast du ich nicht gefickt, bist du gefickt. You know, and people would like, thank you. People really uh, liked, liked is the wrong word. They really appreciated being told the truth. Mm -hmm. So then I, I turned that into a book. And then um, whilst I'm finishing up my third book, we started to give welcome away just for free. So I just give it away to people for free. They can download it. Yeah. So uh, so online as well. Uh, and did you decide to do that after the print, or was that was that all? No, it's after the print. It's actually we started doing it a lot when I did a Kickstarter campaign for my third book. Mm -hmm. And originally, you watch the three minute video, and there's a code at the end to get the book. Well, there you go. All you have to do is spend three minutes, and you get the book for free. But it just felt weird. It felt like. I was pushing people too much. Do this and you'll get that. And I just said, fuck it. And I just started tweeting, 
here's the free book. Mm -hmm. It's free book Friday, here it is. And I felt that balanced me because I was asking for help with the Kickstarter, but I was giving help at the same time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now I just give it away. Yeah, you do. You you say you're you're, you're traveling a lot, uh, doing a lot of uh, keynotes, a lot of lectures, that sort of thing. What are they involving at the moment? What, what's what sort of feedback are you getting from the lectures and talking? Oh, talk well, I I've, sp I've spent a lot of time doing this, right? So today's lecture, there's probably two years of content, and then tweaking specifically for this event. Um, but I do a punk rock lecture, which is not the history of punk. It's my what I went through in the northeast of England with the miners' strikes, the electricity cuts, and then living in London, joining PIL. I was technically proficient. You don't have to be technically proficient to be in a punk band. All of that stuff. So I do that lecture. Um, I talk about diversified skill set, my trip to China. Um, I do a Kickstarter lecture. Um, I do about 10 different lectures. And um, it's whatever, whichever one of those helps anybody, I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've set up in bands' apartments and just, you know, thrown up my projector, the bands ordered pizza. Oh, actually, well, last time I did it in LA, the band didn't have any money, so I bought them pizza as well and sat in their kitchen and just did it. So I just like doing that stuff. I think people like to get real world information delivered without any bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of people doing this and the first 30 minutes are like, when I was managing Fleetwood Mac, when I did this and just bullshit stories from people who haven't gotten out enough, you know. So hopefully I'm just delivering real world information in a way that people can use it. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when people come, uh, you know, maybe that people walk into your lecture that, uh, that have just been told to go and see you really don't uh, have any idea of your background, do you, do you find uh, the effect that you, that you have on them from that lecture is as impactful as it would be that some, with someone that goes in that knows who you are in the first place? Oh, I hope so. I'm, I'm, found, I'm finding a bunch of people now who are like, well, why are you talking about PIL? I'm like, well, I was in the fucking band for five years, you know, or... Why are you handing out pieces of the ministry cage or killing joke scenery? Well, it's because I was on tour with ministry and I made the, I, this is what I did. So there's this weird, really nice point at which my stuff kind of went like that. And I, I thought I was going to stop traveling and settle down with my family and write books. And, uh, and that's what I did. And then now I, I'm traveling more speaking than I ever did as a drummer. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. It's nice to be around during the day and meet people instead of just being in this situation at the end of the day at night where only certain people get backstage. You know, I, I love meeting people during the day, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. No, look, I'm interested in, uh, in Asia. There's, there's been a lot of talk <laughs> over the last few years about Pan-Asia, India, Southeast Asia, Asia itself, and, and the growth of music over there. What's your interest in going over there? I just went... Because I was interested in what was happening, different bands, different sounds. You know, I made an album of my own over there called the China Dub Sound System. Um, and it's interesting from a business point of view because there's no copyright in China. There's no copyright in India, you know. Um, so bands have to deal with that situation differently than looking to the law for protection. Mm -hmm. They have to look to their imagination and their entrepreneurial skills to, pr tr to protect themselves, which is really the truth everywhere else. The idea that copyrights protect us really is, you know, only in certain situations when somebody r rips you off and steals your music, not when a, a, a listener downloads your music illegally. We don't need to be protected from that. But the, the Indian bands and the Chinese bands are used to not being protected. So the Indian bands will just give their music away. Mm -hmm. If you buy their album, it comes packaged with one or two others for you to give to your friends because that's the most valuable thing you can give to a band is sharing mm -hmm. and building, helping to build their fan base. So all of that stuff just interests me. Yeah. Now can we, uh, can we get a little insight into the, the next book you're writing? You said you're going to take a few days off in St Kilda to uh, 
to reshuffle? It's you said it's increased in pages, and you need it, to sort of work on it a little bit. What's yeah. happening with that? Band Smart is kind of the prequel to Tour Smart. Right. It went up to nine hundred and fifty pages because at, at events like this, I meet people. And I'm like, hey, you were really interesting. I saw your panel. Would you do a piece for my book, or would you write up what you said? Because I want to include it in my section about managers or whatever. Um, so it went up to 950 pages, and I've been brutally editing it down. It's everything from deciding to want to be a band or a DJ or an artist to choosing a name to how your name choice affects the SEO uh, of your presence um, <clears throat> through rehearsing why do bands break up? You know, what skill set do you want from people in a band and you know, just everything up until uh, national touring. Mm -hmm. So it includes local gigging all the way up to where Tour Smart starts, which is national touring. Mm -hmm. So, and there's just, there's probably 400 people who've contributed so far. Okay. Some really good information. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, de it's de definitely the, the books you want on your shelf, uh, apart from the, you know, I think the the music biographies are becoming mundane these days. It seems to be the same story. These books, uh, these books seem to be the ones that possibly people should be going out and reading. Mm. No, well, getting an so. idea, you know. <coughs> yeah, like you said, too smart. Well, plus it's just time. Uh, eye surgery is on version seventy five of eye surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, the music business is still still on version one point two. And I think one of the ways it can get through to the next levels is by people like me and all the other people who've contributed to my books sharing their mistakes. You know, this good stuff. And it's like, here's what you should do. Think about doing this. Don't do this, you know. Or if you do it, be aware that this is what happened to us when we did it. Mm -hmm. So we stop repeating the same mistakes that everybody keeps repeating. Great advice. Martin, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much cool. for joining us here on the, uh, uh, out here at the Arts Centre. It's, uh, it's Martin Attens here for Face the Music 2012, and uh, good, good luck with the, with the 10 days here, mate, and good luck with the book, and hopefully Thanks. we'll catch up with you again down the track. All the cool. best. Thanks a lot.